Hey, welcome back to EMP Cycle Works. Today we are working on a 2019 Road Glide. Um, this is one of the first 131 cubic inch motors that I built. And this one ended up making like 161 horsepower and about 158 foot pounds of torque um, before we added the Trask Turbo to it. So now it's about 205 horsepower, trying to get it up to about 230. So I have a Dragos Bike Works cam that I'm going to be throwing in this thing, and you guys get to come along for the ride. I'm going to show you how I do it, and uh, it should be fun. So let's do it. Thank you. All right, I'm going to start by, i got to take this exhaust off, so I'm going to start disassembling the plenum here, and uh, we'll go from there. We gotta separate the plenum from the throttle body and we'll start with these small, six small screws on the perimeter of this, uh, the plenum. Those screws hold a retaining ring and behind the retaining ring is a piece of Lexan or plexiglass that allows you to see inside the plenum here. Very carefully remove it. We're gonna remove this and we're just gonna spin it. Got magnets that retain it. So. Now we have our three standard quarter 20 bolts that retain the plenum to the throttle body. Remove those carefully. And I have to take the tank off because the plenum, part of it goes up underneath the tank, so. With the tank removed and the vacuum lines removed, as well as the hose clamp, we can carefully remove the plenum. Now we'll begin to remove the, the main exhaust pipe, and there's a retainer back by the rear passenger foot pegs that we gotta remove. So we'll remove that bolt. The nut in the washer. And then we'll remove the bolts that hold that pipe to the actual turbo output. Once we get all the bolts removed, we can separate the exhaust pipe from the rear retainers. And I probably should have done that first, as to not let this pipe drop, but it dropped a little bit. No harm. Now the hose clamp for the oil return from the turbo, we get to remove the hose clamp, and then we'll disconnect the feed line from the top of it, the turbo that is, and move it out of the way. Now there's a heat shield that runs across the motor here. We're going to take that off. There's three hose, there's two hose clamps that hold it. And now we can remove the turbo from the, the manifold. There are four bolts. And once all those four bolts are removed, we can gently lift the turbo off the manifold. Being careful not to damage the oil return line, as I'm going to keep that on the turbo. And there it is, more power. We'll get another heat shield on the rear section of the manifold. We're going to remove that. Disconnect the O2 sensors. Good idea to disconnect them before you try to remove the manifold, otherwise you run into an issue. The manifold is attached to the there are bolts and nuts holding the manifold to the, the the trash cam cover. Remove those. And then we'll remove the exhaust flange nuts from the heads. In this case I had to drop the chin spoiler to access them here. 
And once those nuts are removed, just got to separate the flanges from the studs and you can pull this manifold off. And I just need to be very careful here. It's easy to scratch the frame and the head when you remove this. From the from trash, it comes in two separate parts, but it's for me. I'm just going to take it off all in one. There it is. All right, I got the turbo broken down as much as I need to. So now it's basically just a cam job. It's kind of a bittersweet day here at EMP Cycle Works. This is the, one of the first bikes that I built when I went out on my own. Unfortunately, it's going to be the last bike that I'm going to work on being out on my own. Come to the decision to shut down EMP Cycle Works here um, in the next week or so. I'm going to go and partner with uh, 41 Performance in uh, Punta Gorda, Florida. Um, they're a great, great Harley shop. Um, so hopefully uh, set up a, you know, my goal is to hopefully set up a, a nice little studio in my house to show you some more builds. I still have this whole Hurricane Ian bike and um, lots of other cool projects uh, to make good, good content. But uh, I want to say thanks for all the support from everybody. That uh, means a lot to me. And, uh, and uh, right on, man. Let's do it. Thank you. I have quite a few videos showing how to install a cam in a Harley Milwaukee 8. Um, this is the Dragos Bike Works cams, kind of like a custom grind that we had, or that they offer. And here I am lubing it up, sticking it in. And we're going to jump back into installing the turbo. Like I said, I have plenty of videos showing how to install a cam. I just want to kind of show you what the whole point of this job was. And this is the Trask cam cover with the mounts for the header pipe and the oil return hose. Very critical for making the system work. And it's attached just like any other cam cover. Now we're going to carefully reinstall the head pipe. Again, being very, very careful here. These heads are diamond cut, so I don't want to damage any of that. And when you get this from trash, it comes in two separate pieces. So it's much easier to install for the first time. But after it's been run, they're kind of like locked together. I didn't really want to disturb that. So get our flange nuts installed. And I'm not going to torque them down too much right now. Just get them started. And the front head. And I'm going to use red Loctite on the retaining bolts that mount to the cam cover. Once I get these in, then I can tighten up the, the head pipe. So the head pipe mounts are torqued. Now we will clean the manifold surface here. I don't have a new gasket, so I'm going to use some of this copper silicone just so I don't have any any exhaust leaks right here. I should have ordered a new set of gaskets for this, but I didn't think about it until you know I got to this point. So just a little bit of silicone, and we should have a, a leak-free seal here. Not ideal, but in a pinch, the stuff works pretty good. And like I said, I don't want to go too crazy here. I'm just trying to get, just trying to let this gasket reseal. Now we'll carefully install the turbo, routing the oil return line down towards the cam cover. And I have two of the bolts installed in the front of it. That way it'll, they can locate onto the, the flange on the head pipe and I don't have to worry about it falling off. I'll get my bolts tight. And the oil return line routed to the cam cover and the hose clamp tightened down. And then the oil feed line 
reattached. And then the heat shields go back in. I'm going to do the rear one first, then the front one. And it, here we're attached to heat shield, just two hose clamps. And the trick is to try to make it put it exactly where it was. That way you don't have any witness marks. This is like a matte finish and, and very easy to scratch. So when they, they're attached, the heat shields are attached, they, they will leave a witness mark where they are. So here we go with the, the main exhaust pipe. And what I do is I'll stick it up here and then I'll put two bolts in the back just to hold it. And then we'll go ahead and get our gasket in there in the between the main flange and the turbo housing here and get some get our bolts run in there apologies if my terminology is incorrect for this in turbo installation here and I didn't show you the the mount in the middle of this exhaust pipe either but you want to get all of the, the bolts started for this exhaust pipe and then once everything is started you start tightening it down starting at the turbo now we'll reinstall the plenum. Installing it into the rubber boot and visually lining up the, the holes for these quarter 20 screws. And I use blue Loctite on these screws. They have that retaining plate, but just in case the retaining plate comes off, I don't want these things being sucked into the motor. So these are pretty critical fasteners here to use Loctite on. Now we'll reinstall our map sensor wire that's attached to the plenum. And then our retaining plate, again, it goes in one way and then you turn it and then the magnets will lock it in, in place. Just got to carefully and figure out which way it goes in and carefully get it in and turn it. And then double check it because you don't want this thing to come out. And tighten up the hose clamps. The in for the input, the charged input. Then we'll carefully install our clear part of the cover here, being careful not to leave any fingerprints on the inside. The outside's fine because you wipe them off on the inside. This is the last chance you're going to have to have a, a clear, clear window into the plenum. And I'll use blue Loctite on the retaining bolts. I get them all started and I will Precision torque them with my small little handheld torque wrench here. Although just just kidding, I just just some slight torque on these. I'm sure there's a torque spec, but after you do this enough times, it's pretty simple to guesstimate the, the amount of right amount of torque you need. And then I'll wipe all my fingerprints off. You don't want to leave any oil on this pipe because when you start it, it can it can. Especially when they're brand new, they will stain it. If they run in, it's not really that big a deal, but still, professionally, I want to keep everything as clean as possible. Thank you for watching, and thank you for all the support this past year. It really means a lot to me. And stay tuned in 2024 for some bigger and better videos from EMP Cycle Works. Thank you.